car, only $26.95. This is the worst with the shit flick critic. You know you're gonna see shit that's absurd with the shit flick critic. From Pandemic the Room, Samurai Cop Troll 2, Man of Sense of my Mighty Connection 2. So come along, see the worst with me, I'm the shit flick critic. G'day everyone and welcome to The Shit Flick Critic with me, your host, Andrew Lewis. If I'd have told you that there was a movie released in the 1980s about a Taekwondo trained synth rock group that by night fought a group of cocaine stealing motorcycle ninjas, I bet you would have thought it'd be too good to be true. Well it is true, but it's far from good. It's Miami Connection. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to my club Park Avenue, Central Florida's hottest nightclub. We have, we have a special, special treat, treat for you today. today. We, have we have a new house band, band with a new dimension in rock and roll. We have the one, the only, Dragon Sound! How is your sister? I'm really concerned about her. She's still hanging around with the damn band, Dragon Sound. When I tell you to leave her alone, leave her alone. As long as we play in that club, he's not going to leave us alone. This band is the only family I have. We are all orphans. Played out of Park Avenue, we got fired, and then the new group beat us up. I need you to get rid of them. You need to get rid of that group, Dragon Sound. Not yet, they're pretty tough. Especially that Korean guy, Mark. He's a black belt in Taekwondo. I'm going to have to give these guys special treatment. We could write another Taekwondo song, and after Tom does one of his guitar solos, we could all break boards. I found my father! Oh my god! Look good, guys. Made in 1987 by director Park Woo Sang and featuring the martial arts stylings of Taekwondo master YK Kim, Miami Connection was made with the hopes of bringing the joy of Taekwondo to a mainstream audience. Park Woo Sang had met YK Kim on a Korean talk show when he was promoting a book about the wonders of Taekwondo and was impressed with YK Kim's passion. After the show, Park Woo Sang offered to make a movie starring YK Kim back in the States, originally titled <laughs> Taekwondo. YK Kim had already established multiple Taekwondo franchises all over America at that point, and from his then 10,000 students, he selected those who would star in the film. YK Kim also self-financed the film himself, and stuck his neck out quite far in order to have Miami Connection produced. After he had what he believed was enough to start production, due to his own inexperience in filmmaking, he found that the amount couldn't even get him past 10 days of filming. YK Kim borrowed from friends, took out loans, and even mortgaged his school to have the rest of the film properly made. Eventually, Miami Connection ended up costing poor YK Kim $1 million, very little of which he saw in return. One of the most enjoyable aspects of Miami Connection by far is the music, which puts the 80s on display in all of its splendor. The two songs that Dragon Sound plays in the club were written by Angelo Giannotti, who also plays the character of Tom and has one of the, if not the most bitching mullet moustache chest hair combos to ever exist in the history of mankind. You are hairy like animals! The first song, Friends, was written in order to convey how important friendship is amongst the group and would seem more in place in a Sesame Street episode than being played in an underground nightclub. The second song Angelo wrote, Against the Ninja, focuses on the band's efforts to let good triumph in the face of evil. Friends through eternity, loyalty, honesty, we we'll stay together through thick or thin. The singer of Against the Ninja, Kathy Kalia, who plays the character of Jane, was in a relationship with Angelo Giannotti at the time. This made things very awkward as the character of Jane is actually in a relationship with another band member in the film. This was likely due to the fact that Angelo Giannotti was brought to the project not for his taekwondo skills but more for his musical talent. This is very obvious in the club scenes where he is the only one who appears to be actually playing his respective instrument and not just kind of fucking around. It kind of makes you wonder how necessary YK Kim's guitaring is in the songs given how often he's seen just clapping his hands and at one point he even takes his guitar off. I also think it's adorable how often he misses the fist pumps in the Against the Ninja chorus. <laughs> Hey, 
While we're still in the clubs, I think the director had a crush on this lady with the windmill boobs because she's in a lot of shots and at one point teleports from the balcony into the crowd. Vincent Hirsch, who plays the character of John, the bassist in the band and Jane's on-screen boyfriend, was the most proficient in Taekwondo so it made more dramatic sense for him to play Jane's love interest. Whenever John and Jane had a kissing scene together, Angelo was sent away for various reasons so there wouldn't be an issue on set. It's a good thing they did send Angelo away as his kissing scenes are very amateurish and extremely awkward to watch. Uh, guys. Tides up. So Miami Connection follows the story of Dragon Sound, a synth rock group of Taekwondo trained orphans who are super 100% non-stop best friends. They all attend college together despite the fact they all appear to be in their late 20s early 30s, far too old to be undergraduates. YK Kim was the oldest of the group, being 40 at the time the film was produced. Apparently the reason why all the band members were made orphans was that it was the quickest and easiest way for the audience to sympathise with the characters all at once, requiring little to no backstory story and development for the characters. <laughs> Sympathise, more like synthesise, am I right? Hit it! The only character whose life we get any insight into is Jim, played by Maurice Smith, who at one point gives a very long and very awkward speech all about his parents and how he came to be an orphan. He does all this with his fly undone. <sighs> My mother was Korean. Yeah, that's really My sad. My father just... black American. She gave me this picture when she was real sick. It's really sad to hear. Would you mind just pulling it quiet? I was only nine years old. Even though the film is called Miami Connection, the entire film takes place further north in Orlando. In fact, the only scene that takes place in Miami is the introduction when the motorcycle ninjas take the cocaine hence the film being called Miami Connection. So Dragon Sound frequently plays at a club after having replaced a band led by my year five English teacher, which upsets the group very much. So much in fact that the leader decides to have a word with the club's owner, which escalates very quickly. And I mean literally escalates, as the band member's volume goes from about two to 10 in half a second. What are you in here for, man? Wasting hey, look, my time? Bitch. I thought I fired you once. Yeah, you, you fired me once because of the goddamn Dragon Sound. That's bullshit. They came in to play goddamn songs for kids. Now who you bullshit? The band lead is yelling so loudly, I'm surprised the club owner can hear anything at all. After the heated words are exchanged, the band and the club manager get into a physical altercation, which the manager wins as he knows martial arts for some reason. The band, still upset with the outcome, managed to gather an entire army of thugs to ambush Dragon Sound at night. And despite the fact that they greatly outnumber Dragon Sound, they still manage to lose due to Dragon Sound's superior martial arts skills. This causes the band to go to a local gang for help, who it just so happens is led by Jeff, Jane's brother who is eager to deal with Dragon Sound due to his detest of John, who is dating his sister. A lot of the characters are intertwined with each other, which can make the plot very confusing. If any of you out there are confused, I've created this simple flowchart which may assist you. The only plot of the film that doesn't involve gangs or cocaine is Jim's side plot to meet his father, which is tragically cut short by a katana sword to the belly. <laughs> which she somehow recovers from. I got better. Originally, Jim was supposed to die from his katana wounds, but when YK Kim was trying to distribute the film, everyone said the ending was too dark, not to mention a waste of everyone's time who had invested in the character. YK Kim decided to reshoot the ending with Jim surviving, but as Park Woo Sang had already gone back to Korea, YK Kim had to direct the ending himself. The funniest thing about the new ending is Jim's father, who is clearly being played by someone much younger with flowers sprinkled in his hair. Before the credits roll, there's text that tells the audience that only through the elimination of violence can we achieve world peace. Which is a nice enough message on its own, but it comes across a little bit hypocritical after a film where all the characters solve just about every altercation with violence and even murder.
Given that the cast of Miami Connection were picked personally by YK Kim from his various martial arts schools, this meant that very few of them had any acting experience, resulting in the wooden performances. I'd love to help you write that song, John. Oh, ninjas. The worst defender of flat acting is William Eagle, who plays Jane's older brother Jeff, who reads his lines with absolutely zero enthusiasm. Don't worry, I won't disappoint you. You don't understand. I'm her brother. I helped you ever since you were a little girl. I've worked very hard to give you the best things in life. It's also worth noting that this film has not one, not two, but five characters whose names start with a J. Being John, Jim, Jack, Jane and Jeff. Due to the fact that YK Kim was a master in Taekwondo and the producer of the film, he has a major role, which is unfortunate as he has a lot of dialogue which, due to his very thick accent, is very hard to understand. Until you get another job, you must continue to play there. I just get the job from Asian. Don't bother us. Another sign of inexperience between the actors is their very annoying habit to talk over one another. They would just talk over which one makes one it another. very They're annoying and hard to understand what they're all trying to say. Oh, my soul! Taylor Swift! Who are those guys? 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 Who are there are also a lot of cast members who weren't even acting, but were really in the professions they were portraying, such as the computer science teacher and the cops, who were apparently so nervous that one of them points his loaded firearm at his fellow officer. There is also an extremely large amount of bikers in the film, as Park Woo Sang found their culture interesting. He even hosted an event with free beer and invited as many bikers as he could, but it looks like he didn't have a lot of control over the group, as a lot of them look at and even flash the camera which he, for some reason, decided to keep in the film. The funniest thing about having actual bikers in the film is the contrast from people who are actually hard and tough to this guy. Who isn't just the gang leader, he's the hanker chief. After Miami Connection had finished filming, it had a limited release in Orlando in selected theatres with scathing reviews, with the Miami Sentinel saying it was the worst film of 1988, which broke poor YK Kim's heart. YK Kim then travelled to Hollywood and met with distributors to promote the film nationwide, all of whom told him to immediately give up his pursuit and throw the film can in the garbage. 22 years later, Zach Carlson, a cult film collector, purchased an original 35mm print of Miami Connection from eBay for $40, knowing absolutely nothing about the film. Zach then had it played in a theatre and everyone immediately fell in love with it, believing it, accurately, to be the most amazing thing ever made. It was after the film's resounding success that Evan Hunsley, a film distributor at the time, called YK Kim praising Miami Connection, informing him that it had been selling out in theatres and offered to purchase it for distribution. YK Kim, initially believing it to be a prank, hung up on Evan, but then after a few more calls realised that it was serious and the people were actually genuinely enjoying the film. They then gathered every member of Dragon Sound back together for the first time in 25 years to play at a theatre to deafening applause, and YK Kim had finally gotten what he had desired. Miami Connection had finally reached an audience, just not how he had planned. If you guys would like to learn more about how Miami Connection was discovered after 22 years, then I strongly suggest watching the Vice Outsider documentary. I'll put a link in the description below. Rating. Miami Connection is a fun, exciting, and kick-ass example of just because a movie is bad, doesn't mean it can't still be a lot of fun. Based on five categories I judge my shit flicks by. Miami Connection can be very dark and sad at times, but that doesn't mean there's not enough there to give you a good chuckle. You could watch Miami Connection a hundred times and still get the exact same amount of enjoyment. It certainly isn't boring as there is enough dispersed throughout to keep you entertained the whole time. It's actually reasonably well shot and edited, with the acting and the storyline being the biggest faults here. Miami Connection was certainly made with the best of intentions from YK Kim, who is himself an amazing man with a big heart who has done a lot for his local community. I do believe him when he says that the main reasons for the creation of Miami Connection was to promote Taekwondo and also to show how important friendship is. There is also another inadvertent lesson to be learned from Miami Connection and that's that just because YK Kim and his followers had the confidence to break bricks and boards with their hands, they thought that that would translate into filmmaking and acting. I think the film speaks for itself in showing that even though confidence is a very important quality to have, it is no substitute for experience and knowledge, which can only be gained over a long time with a lot of hard work. 
I give Miami Connection minus four stars, and for all of its faults, it's an extremely fun film with a lot of heart. So thank you for joining me on another episode of The Shit Flick Critic. I should have my next episode up in a month or so. In the meantime, please be sure to check out my Shit Flick Quickies, which I'll be uploading every Saturday. Also, I'm on Twitter now, so please follow me if you want updates. Also, I'll be on Facebook too. So please like, please subscribe, and unfortunately, YouTube has taken away annotations, so I can no longer do the thing where I have all the videos. They've got end screens now, which means I can only have two videos. So I'll just get in the middle here. I'm gonna have one video here, one video here, my subscribe button, so see you all later. Yeah.